Today, I want to talk to you about the technology of 3D printing, or as the insiders call it, additive manufacturing, and how it's being used for medical devices. Their ultimate goal is to be able to use this technology for biological printing. Oh yes, I'm talking about printing bones and organs, which then scientists and doctors could use to customize body parts perfectly for each patient. I talked to a chemical and supplier engineer at one of the largest medical device companies who uses 3D printing every day. And I got the inside scoop on this crazy technology. You're watching iHeartSTEM. Today, we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. Additive manufacturing has introduced a couple big things for medicine. First and most importantly is the speed with which new devices can be created. Let's say a doctor or scientist has an idea of an alternative to sutures to stop bleeding in a specific situation. On average, to develop a nude medical device that's going to be implanted into a human, it takes about 10 years from the time of the idea until it's ready for doctors. With medical printing, you can reduce the research and development processing time to just two to six months, making it a lot easier to implement new ideas and also giving the ability to test samples throughout the way. Another really important thing is alternative surgeries. So you could actually use a catheter to implant a medical device rather than doing open heart surgery, which reduces the invasiveness as well as the healing time for the patient. And last but certainly not least is process simplification. Medical devices are complicated and often contain multiple components. Traditional technology would have to print these in multiple pieces, but with medical printing, you can print these in one piece. The process is pretty typical of manufacturing. You model the device, you validate and qualify the device, and you print the device with a whole bunch of quality control steps in between. But I want to draw your attention to the modeling. The modeling is where you design the device, and this is done via a software program that allows you to draw a 3D picture of what you want to create. But this is so much more than just designing the shape. There's so many other factors. Take, for example, the printing process itself. If powder printing is used, this is where a machine deposits thin layers of powder over multiple hours and a laser hardens the layers. It's up to an engineer to determine where is the excess powder going to fall because that could create issues for how the device is used. Or another process is where you start with the solid, you heat it up to very high temperatures, which basically makes it a liquid, and then that is reshaped over multiple hours. This has a whole other set of issues like warping and shrinking. And in general, medical devices, you really have to think about susceptibility to bacteria and is this device going to create friction within the body? Like all revolutionary processes, it's not ideal for every situation. The biggest limitation for the medical industry is the materials. All materials that are being used have to be FDA approved, which creates a very short list. In addition, the materials have to be able to withstand the printing process itself, which in most cases means being able to withstand very high temperatures. In terms of printers, of all the different printers out there, there's only a subset that are good for medical devices, which includes the expertise to be able to validate and qualify the device. In terms of 3D printing overall as a technology though, the biggest limitation is the printing time. While it's great for bringing new devices to market very quickly in comparison to traditional manufacturing, even printing a small device can take 10 hours. So if you're looking to replicate and print a bunch of devices very quickly, Traditional manufacturing is going to be the way to go. Printing bones and organs involves a combination of cells, nutrients, and other materials. So summarizing the process as best as I understand it, it starts with a blood sample, either of a patient's or of generated cells. They then combine that with the nutrients and the other materials. And then similar to other additive manufacturing, this is layered over a period of time into an organ or whatever you're trying to create. Now, bioprinting as a whole has started, but it hasn't been approved for human use yet because there's still a lot to figure out. How are you going to get enough cells for one organ? How are you going to get quality cells? How is this going to integrate into the body? And how is it going to be supported ongoing? In addition to all of those solves, there's also the huge regulatory steps that need to be taken. And there's really a need for someone to step into the industry and get all of these biological materials approved by the FDA. Now, despite all these obstacles, Experts still believe because of the rapid progress, we will see this happen in our lifetime in the next 20 to 30 years. That last answer, does it not feel like we are literally living in the future? 
Now I have two asks for you. If you're enjoying the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you have a topic that you would love to see on iHeartSTEM, feel free to email me. The email address is in the YouTube page. I'll see you next week.